Hey everybody, today we're talking about rest periods for endurance training. Now, what is the training for? It's to build muscular endurance. What is muscular endurance? It's to be able to contract a muscle for longer periods of time, right? It's being able to fight off that fatigue in one given bout of intense exercise. So, the training here is I need to introduce fatigue and I need to stress the body to recover from that fatigue as quickly as I can. Now, if I'm doing a muscular endurance set, it's not like I have to sit there and um, fully, you know, I don't have to have the heaviest weights. I don't have to, you know, do the, you're going to have more volume, especially rep volume, but it doesn't necessarily have to be set volume. Um, and, and the biggest, you know, the biggest portion of this is I'm not necessarily, I'm still pushing myself to, uh, fatigue to like elements where I'm not really sure if I can get it, but my rep range is going to be a little higher, a little more generous here. So it might be anywhere from 10, maybe eight, probably 10, 12 to 50, a hundred, even more than that reps. So I'm trying to see if the muscle can clear out the fatigue byproducts and if it can take in that energy and use it. The adaptation that we're searching for here is, you know, I, at least the easiest way for me to think about it is I want to capillarize the muscle. I want to give more blood supply to the muscle so that it can manage the fatigue more efficiently and more quickly. Um, specific example. So if I'm pairing exercises, I can get away with just 30 seconds of rest. Um, especially if I'm pairing exercises, because I can just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If I'm doing just a standalone thing, you're, you might find that that's not standalone one exercise at a time. You might find that that's not enough for you to really have even kind of the same amount of output on your second or third set as you did on your first set. So you should look into that, right? You can tinker with that. If I'm doing a standalone and I'm just trying to push these reps, then, you know, 60 seconds, 90 seconds is probably an appropriate amount, even though it's for muscular endurance. Now, the key here is we're talking about muscular endurance. We're not talking about cardiovascular endurance. So this is going to be muscle group specific. It's not going to be uh, systemic. It's not going to involve your entire body. So I can build endurance by running, but I'm probably not really building it in my leg muscles. I'm building it in my system, right? I'm teaching my entire cardiovascular system to work more efficiently. And I am going to capillarize some of the muscles that are involved there. But um, if you do a set to failure of body weight squats, that's way more excruciating than the pain that you feel from running, right? Depending on how fast you're running, I suppose. But um, that, that's just kind of another thing for you to think about. Now, muscular endurance, not cardiovascular endurance. If we're looking for cardiovascular endurance, we're looking for a video that we've already filmed called the rest periods for aerobic intervals. So look up that one if that's more what you're looking for here. Now, uh, quick summary, if you're pairing exercises together, you can probably get away with 30 seconds of rest for training that is endurance purposed, muscular endurance purposed. Um, and if you're just doing standalone exercises, then you want to look more toward like a 60 second or maybe a 90 second rest period.